Listen to me, beings of light, and take note of what I have to say. This is Arx, which was once a city like so many others, spreading proudly beneath the majesty of the sun. Our King Poxellus was a true and just king who knew how to deal with our occasional skirmishes with the goblins or the ratmen. Many years after Poxellus's death, in the fatal year of 226, our sun began to fall into decline and an eternal winter fell upon our world. His Majesty Lunshire, noble son of Poxellus, decided to move the whole city of Arx underground into one of the dwarves' abandoned mines. At this point, the conflicts between the different races in Arx dissolved. Not just humans, but dwarves, trolls, and goblins all worked together for their common survival. This migration underground took five years, during which the sun disappeared completely from our skies. All the races built their homes in this new setting, and little by little, relationships between the races began to slip back to the way they had always been. But today, evil is knocking at the gates. Akba, the god of destruction, is about to... Ah! Hey, you there! Uh. This way, quick! Don't let him get away! Gotcha! It's all right! He's Come trapped on. here! Get this door broken down! Hello and welcome to a let's play of Arx Fatalis. Um, this is a role-playing adventure game. You're set out in an, well, basically a gigantic 8 level cavern system where you need to perform a mission and just survive. The game starts with pretty much the survival part. Get to choose from one of four looks. No female character. It's it doesn't much matter. It does appear you have the same voice actor no matter what, and it just appears how, changes how your character appears in some of the dialogue scenes. That's pretty much it. There's no classes to choose from, just four attributes and nine skills. You do have your basic stereotypical classes represented though. You have these skills, major skills and the combat skills. So if you want to specialize in something, uh, you, that's certainly an option. At the same time, if you sort of do a little bit of everything, you're still probably going to do just fine. So everything sort of works out. Attributes wise, we have strength, mental, dexterity and constitution. Basically equipment use and physical combat with strength. Dexterity, no no, this is mental. Mental is for... it's basically determines your mana pool and magical resistance. Uh, pretty much only really usable for a mage. You might be want even if you don't want to really use all that much magic, it might make some sense to put a few points here, but I wouldn't put any more than that. Exterity is for precision in combat and increases chance to do critical strikes. Probably also affects uh, archery. Constitution, resistance to poison, health pool. Each also affects a certain set of skills, so. Right. Um, what, what I was thinking about here is that. I suppose it's important to understand that the attributes are they're like force multipliers. 
or in this case skill multipliers, hit point multipliers, mana point multipliers it's uh, it makes a huge difference just putting a few points there and the other multiplying factor I think is your level we're currently at level zero so it's probably like your level plus one times your attribute so one times six we have six mana points seven eight right So it does, the difference doesn't seem all that much now, but it, it will grow into a drastic difference after, after you level up some. Hit points seem to be double your constitution value. Every point... Well... Poison resistance works in a different way. Strength doesn't directly increase anything but damage right it's sort of uh, very stable until around 12 points then it starts to drastically go up right skill wise we have stealth which is exactly what you think uh, exactly as you would think it is except even pickpocketing when your stealth levels are extremely high I think the threshold to be able to pickpocket is 50 technical skills is uh, picking locked doors, disabling traps intuition helps you detect hidden objects such as secret passages and traps Ethereal Link warns you of presence of hostile creatures and gives you information about your opponent's status during fights. Also determines your mana regain rate. Um, I'm not sure how useful that is. Some mana regain is probably wanted, but at the same time, since the mental ability acts as a multiplier for these skills, just taking that will probably ensure us that we have enough of this skill that we at least regain mana at some rate. Um, object knowledge used for actions such as repair things, making potions, poisoning weapons, identifying objects uh, that's worth noting identifying objects is only possible I think through your own character so if you do not have the skills to identify magical objects you do not have the ability to take advantage of those magical objects this is a very very necessary skill for everyone to have that's why I think it's tied to repair things because that's something any fighter would need making potions, I mean restoration potions uh, poison cures, mana restoration no matter what character you play those are useful things poison weapons probably for thief or assassin types so it's just everyone's given an excuse to invest in this. Casting grants you access to different levels of spells. There are 10 levels of spells. Also determines ability to protect yourself from magic. I think for every 10 points you get access to a level of spells. And 10 levels, so this skill would be great to be at a hundred. I'm not sure if there's any point in raising it more. I have no idea how it affects spellcasting. A lot of damage could be either set in stone or dependent on your level. I do not know how it works. But since we, I do intend to play a caster, so casting is a skill we have to bump up fairly quickly. Uh, then we have melee combat, range combat, and defense. I, I don't think I need to explain those. Here's the I need to explain one thing on the how the magic in the, this game works because it explains why I'm going to build my character I'm going to build it. We have a mana pool, so mana points, and each spell will cost a certain amount of mana points. This is some of the thing how it usually works in a lot of games. 
it's a part of how magic works here, but that's not the all, all of it. There are further limiting factors of spellcasting, and uh, it's important to understand that because it affects things. One is we unlock spells through both the skill and runes. If we do not have rune stones that are used to cast spells, they're usually a combination of two to three rune stones, maybe more if it's something really special. But you have to have them, otherwise there's is no possibility of you even attempting to cast them. So that's what. However, that only unlocks your potential to cast it. To actually go from having the ability to bring the spell into reality, you have to draw the runes in air. Right here, on, from with your controller or pointer or whatever. And you can store up to three of those. So let's say, I think the initial spell we're gonna get is like something like uh, Ignite. So it's a combination of runes, create and fire. So you can light lit up torches, maybe get some campfire going, that sort of thing. It's, it, you cannot harm anyone with it, but you easy to understand concept. Two runes. I think one is like a line, another is sort of like a U shape. But every time we want to cast it, we need to go into casting mode, draw it, draw it, and then release, and we'll cast it. Or we can store it three times where we can release it just with a press of a button without having to draw the lines. It's important to understand that because some things will not die from three stored spells or additional or or you might have more enemies than you can kill through just those three. So it creates a situation where while you can be in a fighting situation, maybe try to draw new runes in an area, store them to use in battle, and that's feasible in certain situations, it's not going to be all that feasible at all. So it, it makes sense for us to have a fallback in case we cannot fully rely on our magic. Which means I want to invest a little bit of strength. Not a huge much. I, I'm fully giving up the heavier armors, heavier weapons, because they also have a negative effect on your spell cast. But I need a little bit of strength to have some kind of shitty armor, some kind of a basic weapon that I can reliably use. It's still a backup, but uh, uh, there's a high probability that, that at least from time to time we're gonna have to rely on that backup. Especially, well, at least early on because we won't start the game with a uh, attack spell. So we have to be able to kill things without spell. Still, mental abilities are gonna be our primary focus. Uh, constitution comes from the ability to Need, from the need, rather, to be able to stand in a normal melee combat or take damage in there. If we basically try to avoid enemies while trying to store up more spells to use in combat. So having a little bit of a health pool at that point is the perfect buffer. I'm ignoring dexterity for now. I think we can put attribute points later on, but I'm not sure about the amount. Currently we were able to put 16 additional points here, and that's a lot. This will shape pretty much how our character will be. We might be able to put a handful of points, but we're not going to be able to totally reshuffle how our character looks like. We have a decent amount of constitution, we have a lot of mental capabilities, we have, a, I think, a average to weak strength and very weak dexterity. Every level up we can also distribute skill points. I want... Well, we have 32 magic or casting. I, I think it's good enough for now. It's good enough because we don't have any rules, so this won't be worthwhile anything until we get those rules. You do get some rules very early on though, so it's not like you can ignore this for long. I want to invest some in technical skills. Maybe mainly because 
picking lock doors, disabling trap trap sounds like things I might want to do. I'm raising melee combat to thirty. I'm not sure what the thresholds for gains in these skills are. But I'm sure every 10 points there's a good chance that we would we will at least do better. Maybe I should raise the technical skills to 32. Uh, we'll want technical skills, object knowledge, co close combat and defense to be decent. Casting will be the highest of all, but the thing is, I, I'm not sure if it makes sense at this early stage, I mean level 0, to hump casting. This is something we'll more invest more once we are actually getting level up. So 30 technical skills, 31 object knowledge, 32 casting, 30 defense, 32 close combat. Right. Maybe the extra point should be put in casting or something. I mean, it's a safe place to drop extra points. Right. And we're finally done. Mushrooms. Have legs. Cursor mode. We're on level two of the uh, world here. We have to get out of here. My memory, it's gone. I remember nothing. Not even my own name. What, what did I come here to do? The gobblers probably crept up on you from behind. Bloody gobblers. Come on, look around your cell. There has to be a way to get out on your side. I can't do anything on my side. Unarmed. Piece of cake. He had a carrot and a piece of paper. Me come replace you after me, Eve. You watching humans. You is be careful with new one. Him dangery looking. Signed Anatole. You just opened my cell. You have to be fairly w careful about not missing any secrets. Very likely we are going to miss some, but the thing about the runes is that some runes are like a single rune in this entire game world. So if you miss it, you can't get any spells that are attached to that particular rune. So that's naturally not something we want to happen. Will you just open my cell?
Work the lever on the side of my cell. Thank you, Amshigar. If you can't remember your name, you better keep this one. It means, he who has no name in a foreign tongue. My name is Koltar, and I was part of the Traveler's Guild before I ended up here. Amshigar. Yes, I'll keep this name for now. What is this Guild of Travelers? Well, you really have lost your memory, haven't you? Our world no longer has a sun to heat it, and outside is nothing more than a huge expanse of ice. Only those who are trained and equipped for extreme conditions are allowed to make the dangerous trek between fortress cities hidden deep in the mountains. These people are the Guild of Travelers. Right. We shall discuss this later. Now let's get out of here. I am injured. I won't be able to get through this hole. I'll stay here and wait till you can open the door. Don't worry about me. I find myself in this goblin jail. I must escape from here and find out who I am. So, I'm a person who appeared out of nowhere, got captured by goblins, doesn't know anything about myself, living in a world that is a frozen ice ball, and the only life is lives in underground caverns. And that's pretty much all we know. Adventure Hole. Medicine herbs. Burn. Medicinal herbs. I'm sort of picking up everything I can. Not sure if it's a great idea, but we have a decent amount of inventory space and a lot of items seem to stack, so... I'm not sure what's valuable at this point or not, so it might still be make it uh, a sensible thing to just pick everything up and if nothing else, gather it somewhere where I can uh, get my hands on it later. The game doesn't have a huge amount of music. Uh, I think it's, it's part of the atmosphere. I mean, there's no orchestral music or anything. It's uh, just you and the environmental noises and things like that. Yuck. Arm. Leather leggings. Ignite. By, if you select the spell here, it uh, creates the runes you need to reproduce in the casting system. It's fairly simple, though. Yeah. I'll store a couple of big knights. It's fairly easy to fail. At the same time, there's a few tips I suppose you can do. One is... Basically... Try to minimize movements. If you need to do some kind of formation like the U, there's no point trying to do it like this. If you are in any kind of serious situation, you need to do it fast. Also, wouldn't hurt if you practice so things those at every opportunity. You will get the hang of it. There are a couple of shapes that are more harder harder than others. It really depends on the rule. Maybe you don't need to practice everything, but your basic attack spells especially probably is good if you don't really have to think about them at all if you draw, when you draw them. We 
We killed the rat. And it had two uncooked ribs. We don't want to eat raw meat. Not sure if they're just less effective or do you actually get sick from doing that. Don't particularly want to test it out. It's easy enough to cook meat. We just need to basically find a fire, an oven or a campfire. Leave the co the meat next to it, and it'll cook in a, uh, in a few seconds. I have two two ignite spells stored, so stored spells can be easily used. My God! Every rat seems to have those two uncooked ribs. How do you notice a torch? Floor plate. Double click on the rope in your inventory once you have found it, then click on the elevator mechanism to tie it up. To tie it. Something is wrong. Um, I've played the game before, but uh, I don't recall details, which is a good thing. I, I don't recall puzzles or why the fuck do these even exist here, these plates. So you'll have to excuse me if I'm not uh, going to waste some time trying to figure things out. The walls are, have these protrusions. It's hard to detect any kind of a, what I, you in your usual game would be, I suppose, a secret door button or something like that. Got a key. Let's pick it up. Also got a tool kit. That we should be able to at least uh, attempt lot picking. They do have uses, so and I think even trying and failing will use things up. Even if you have zero chance of actually succeeding, rope, loads of bread. So having that, that uh, single tool set is not going to be enough by any means. Might suffice us until we. Get to some kind of a shopkeeper. A little bit of food, a couple of extra torches, and a rope. I'm not sure I want to go there. We still have this uh, rest of this unexplored, so. Although, spider webs. Earthquakes. Because that's the number one thing you probably don't want to experience when you're living in an underground tunnel network. Uh, 
rocks. We're gonna need some proper weapons. The, the bones probably aren't terrible weapons, but they don't have any durability. They basically break after hitting something a few times. Hmm. cars Rock. Not sure what you do with those. Better take it with us, though. Water Lily. Life potion, cure poison, five gold, and a scroll of magic missile. We're supposed to learn that magic missile. Um, no, not learn it, but to ready it. Now the spell has been pre-cast. When you want to cast the spell, just double-click the action on the spell, or actually, that's not a good way to use things. You have numbered buttons corresponding to those uh, quick slots, so better use those. Otherwise, aiming is going to be a bit difficult. Ignite the fire. Six rat ribs. And fresh fish. We'll probably use them as healing items more than uh, just food at this point. Actually, I'll eat them if uh, the game start. The character basically starts complaining about getting hungry. But re realistically, you're probably going to use more of it just to heal your character. There's a spy. Draw distance isn't exactly anything uh, anything to draw right home about. I'm poisoning. You. See if there are more spiders. I do have an antidote, but uh, only one. More food and another rope. Um, I think this is more of an alternative way to get the rope than anything else. You're not supposed to require the finding of any of those secret places. Your poison potion. Porch, sending gold. I notice an odd wall. 
right before we killed these two spiders. Right. I cannot break it just like that. It's too sturdy for me to break. I don't think we can do anything uh, with it at the moment. Just need to mark it. Uh, we did get a level up. I put markers here. Maybe? Well, I don't know how. I'm sure there's a way to put uh, custom markers here. There has to be. Come on. Blah blah blah. Lee. Okay, I can lean. Right. Map. Interrupt current spell. Okay. That's a good thing to know. Drop a weapon. No. I go full screen. Oh, we are in full screen. Right, right, right. There probably is, but it's certainly not marked there. I need to test that out on my own. It just... it would be great to be able to mark for locations of interest. The reason I'm fairly certain that it's uh, we do have the capability of doing that somehow is that this is well basically a reimagining of Ultima Underworld. So it's very hard for me to believe that there's uh, no way to do any kind of a uh, Any kind of markings. I don't believe it. What the fuck did I do? What the fuck happened? I probably used a healing item. Yeah, I'll, I'll test this on my own time. What is it? There's quick keys to use potions. I use a potion. Mana potion G. Life potion H. I use the life potion. It's a waste, but it's not too big of a deal. Have to be careful in the future. I wonder if something actually opens up now that both of these uh, are pressed. Could just be to open this one. Hardly matters. You did get the level up. Fresh fish. We've been down there. Water lily. Medicinal herbs. A dagger. Well, it's not great, but it's better than a bone. Plus 2 damage. Durability 19 out of 50.
Another fresh fish. Hmm. Right. We have pans and we have a dagger. And a level up. One attribute point to distribute. Giving ourselves more strength would unlock extra equipment. Armor weapons. More mental. Mm, metic resistance, mana points. More life, more dexterity maybe. I I'm thinking of holding on to these attribute points because I, I don't actually recall what we might even require. Is there any point to having extra dexterity? Is it an equipment requirement? What? I, I don't know. 15 skill points. Right. Um, we want to distribute the 15 points between all the skills, or we, are we? Is it better to just raise one by 10 points and put the extra somewhere else? I, I think the game probably doesn't care about a point or two in a skill. It probably cares about threshold. So 50 every 10 point maybe. Uh, 50 is probably the point where you start to be okay at a skill. That sort of thing. So, we could also hold on to these skill points I suppose. See what we need. Um, no immediate reason to use these. I, I don't intend to haul, sit on them for a huge amount of time, but uh, at the moment, killing rats and stuff, it doesn't really make sense to use them on anything. Basically, I know too little about the game to make good informant, uh, informed decisions. I don't even know what investing skill points in those abilities do really. I know the general idea of the skill, but I don't know the threshold. I don't know if something is required to use other things. I mean, is the combat skill just for damage or is it used somewhere else? I, I don't know. I'd like to basically see a few items, see what they require in general. Maybe get to our first city where we can uh, shop around to just so we can see a larger selection of items and what they require in general. Then we can uh, start making our choices. I don't think we can do badly by choosing casting and combat abilities at this point. Object knowledge will always be useful to Technical skills I'm not so sure of, because I'm sure it's very useful if you invest a lot in it, but I, I don't intend to take it all the way, so I'm not sure how much of a payoff if there's going to be with that. And combat, we probably would be satisfied with something like a value of 40. So we could raise it now, because now's the time that we're going to rely on it almost exclusively. So why not put the points in there now, where they'll do the more, most good. Right. Mm -hmm. Technical skills, maybe. I want technical skill, object knowledge, defense, close combat to be 40, and then probably start pushing casting higher and higher. That's my goal. So next of all, we can get technical skill to 40, probably defense 40. Then object knowledge and everything extra to cast. So by the time we're around level 45, we probably have these at a nice place and a decent amount of casting too, so we can have access to level 4 or 5 spell. Right. That seems like a decent enough of a goal. Uh, we have to keep in mind though that attributes will affect these, so... Mm. 
where we don't want to invest too much in certain things. Uh, probably defense next, because I don't see myself putting extra points in constitution. So defense would be a fairly safe place to put your points in. It, it requires 10 points. We put more in mental abilities. We are going to get technical skills, intuition, object knowledge, casting. So... So. So, so. Me bring you back to cell now. Aim at his head. Me rip your heart out. Die, you bastard. You think you can hurt me? Yep. Pretty confident I can hurt you. About. I'm Shagar, we got him. He has some money and a stick. A piece of wood. Yeah, he broke the leather. Trouble clicking Arrange's inventory. Excellent. Reservation. Locked. I don't think we have the skills to pick lock this. We have to find a key. Just after you went through the hole, I heard a noise. So I hid and waited till the goblin came in. This time I got the drop on him, sneaky bastard. I don't understand why the speech volume tends to be so low in some games. I tried to adjust the balance already to favor speech. I don't think I want to mess with it too much. Uh, maybe the game has subtitles or something. Uh, should we be worried about the earthquakes? You'd better go now, Um Shigar. Hmm, a little. Yeah, access point to level 2. There are some icons here that I don't recognize. I'll move this somehow. Well, I can move. No, I don't recognize the icons, but I'm seeing a few here and there. Right. Uh, these were pressure plates, right? Level 2 axis. Uh, well, I'm sure I'll uh, learn what they are. Issue, well, I'd like to say level 2 done, but or level 3 done, but we're by no means done. We just escaped, I suppose, through some kind of abandoned section of the cave system. And we're heading to level 2, where the jail was, so... The, the level 3 is not this small. It's vastly, vastly larger, so... There are either alternative... Either we need to break there, or there are... From level 2 or 4, there are alternative passages to the third level. I suppose this is more or less like a tutorial. No serious threats, uh, and the game more or less held your hand, uh, telling you how to use scrolls and spells and inventory and everything. Right. 
level two and I suppose this is goblin control territory. It doesn't that doesn't mean every goblin we're gonna face is gonna be hostile, but we probably should expect the goblins in this area to be hostile. 